we brush the inside of the mold with vegetable oil, very similar to the way you would prepare a cake pan, because we want to make sure that when we take the mold away, um, that, that it comes away easily. It's, it's, it's hard enough dealing with a 130-pound piece of concrete. We want the mold to come away easily. The parts of the mold that are the, the curved round part that actually surround the concrete, we don't do the parts that um, actually touch each other as you put the mold together. We don't do the bottom that sits on the board. And we don't do above the, the line where the concrete is going to sit. Then we put the mold together with a series of kind of interesting hardware. Uh, we use pegs and washers to attach the three pieces of mold together. And then we use these little wedges that hold the, the, the pegs tight. The wedges go through the, the bolt and tightens up the whole thing so it pulls the mold together so it stays nice and tightly together. The sand makes a barrier inside the mold so then we pour the concrete. It, um, this concrete will not seep out as easily. We put the plastic on so that we can reuse that sand over and over again. Then you start putting in a series of rubber balls. The first ones are about seven inches in diameter. Those go in the bottom. That's the first large hole in the, in the structure. Then you put the bladder in. The bladder is really um, a, a buoy. If you've ever been to a yacht club or a boating club, these big orange buoys that are in the water, well, that's what we use to make this bladder, and that creates the entire inside space. And you fill that up with air, with a, a small air compressor, until the green balls that you put in there, the seven-inch balls, can't move. Then you take a, the next series of balls, which are four to five inches rubber balls, and they go in around the top to create even more holes in this concrete structure for the fish to swim around in and for the uh, oysters to be able to live on the inside and the outside of the structure. Then we put more air into the bladder so that all of those balls are tight, tight, tight inside and can't move when you pour the concrete over them. But the point is, that you pl place these balls in such a way that they create holes and you place them in such a way that they're not too close to each other so that they provide structure for the inside of the, of the reef ball. So the, the green ones go in first, the seven inch ones go in first, then the bladder ball goes in. And that bladder, the largest one, creates the entire inside space that makes the uh, reef ball kind of like a bell. And after you get that to a size that the green ones don't, the seven inch balls don't move, then you stop putting air in and you take the four inch balls and put them around the top. They should not touch each other, they should not touch the seven inch balls, and we try to have between one and a half to two inches between every one of them, and that creates the strength so that the reef ball doesn't come apart. It's not a science, it's like a craft. Every reef ball comes out different. The main ingredient is sacrete or uh, concrete mix. And we use two 60-pound bags of concrete mix, about 10 pounds of cement or mortar mix to make this, the um, mixture stronger. Then we add a, a chemical called microsilica. It's a black powder substance that goes in and it creates, um, helps the, the concrete stay so that it will be, stay longer underwater. Um, we hope that they will last a long time, and this apparently is a, a chemical that helps do that. It takes about two, two buckets of, of, of water, but the second one we're going to put in slowly so we don't get this too, too wet. If the concrete is too runny when you pour it, it has a better chance of breaking. Once that mixture is done and, and it's all smooth, we add over the top of it this stuff called AdvaFlow, and that helps soften the mixture and makes it easier to pour, kind of like softens it down. You, you, you mix and mix and mix until it's nice and smooth, all the concrete is wet. You sort of get a feel after making a few of these about how the concrete feels as you're mixing it with the, with the, with the shovels, and, and then all of a sudden you just know it's time to pour. Well, we pour the concrete down the edges so that it doesn't go over the top of the bladder. We don't want to cover up the, the, 
the valve so that we can't let the air out when we need to take the mold away. You also don't want to pour the concrete directly over the top so that you um, get concrete on the rod, then you cannot pull the rod out to get the bladder out of the, out of the uh, finished mold. So we pour it carefully and gently down over the edges of the mold. And then we tap, we have a, a rubber mallet that we tap and as you tap on the outside of the mold, it helps the concrete slide down all the way to the bottom so you know you've filled in all the gaps. It's a fabulous environmental project. The children can really make a connection between what they're doing and how this is going to help the Chesapeake Bay. And once they've done a big project like that with their, with their hands and their hearts and their minds, um, they become more attuned to the environment in general. I have had kids who said, who wanted to do a project and I'd say, well, let's go pick up trash. Well, that doesn't sound very attractive. But those same kids, after doing a project like this, when they really feel like they've done something, um, then they understand why picking up trash is also important and they do that willingly and do other little projects willingly because they have a better understanding. Um, we say we're building the next generation of environmental stewards with this project.